It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 2. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I want to be just as, as, as open as I can with you guys on the indictment against the president. I read all 45 pages of it. Uh, it appears that Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, John Eastman, uh, and uh, Jeffrey Clark, who was uh, assistant U.S. attorney or, or attorney general, are co- named co-conspirators. They're not by name in the indictment, but based on references in, we can deduce that they are. There's also a fifth person. No one can figure out the identity of this person, a political consultant uh, involved in actions in Pennsylvania. They're trying to nail that one down, but those four uh, we know Rudy Giuliani is co-conspirator number one, and I, 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 I'm happy to to take your questions on this indictment. I, I really, I want to talk about the bond downgrade, but I think this is actually the bigger story, the one people are interested in today, and I want to just focus on this aspect of it with Rudy Giuliani. We don't have to relitigate. 2020, whether it was stolen. It's notable that the prosecutor uses the phrase outcome determinative fraud. Outcome determinative fraud means uh, there could have been fraud, but it didn't affect the outcome of the election. Now, I've mentioned this repeatedly. I used to be an elections lawyer in Georgia. I, I know election law, and I know that in every election there are shenanigans. There is fraud in every election. There are mistakes made in every election. Elections are run by people. People are stupid. Therefore, stupid mistakes happen. The question is, is it enough to affect the outcome of the election? And no one has been able to show in a court of law that there were outcome determinative uh, fraud levels. In other words, yeah, there probably was fraud. In fact, uh, there was a lawyer uh, arrested in Florida who tried to go into Georgia to vote. Uh, It happened to be on the Republican side. There have been a couple of people, Republicans and Democrats, uh, arrested for fraud in the 2020 election. This is a bipartisan issue. This isn't just the Democrats. The question is, was it enough to affect the outcome? And no one's been able to show in a court. And that's key here. No one's been able to show it. But we don't have to relitigate. 2020. We, we don't have to. You can bring me your what about this and what about this and what about this and what about this. Much of it debunked. Some of it, even if not debunked, doesn't affect the outcome. And that's the issue legally is does it affect the outcome? Does it rise to the level to affect the outcome? And you can think that it does. You can think that a single fraudulently cast vote uh, should throw out the election, but that's not the law. Your want, and this goes for progressives as well, what you want doesn't mean it is so legally. Progressives want Donald Trump under the jail. Just because they do doesn't mean what Jack Smith has filed is a good case. But I raise that to raise this issue, which is a more pressing and important matter for you to consider. We do know some of the claims made were lies or misrepresentations by Rudy Giuliani and and Sidney Powell. For example, I bring this one up specifically because this is when I got a lot of calls on this after the 2020 election. There was an expert from Texas, a computer expert, who showed that the voting machines in four counties in Michigan had a statistically... Uh, alarming rate of casting ballots for Joe Biden. These were uh, Dominion voter system machines. And 
it appeared that the machines were overcounting votes for Joe Biden, just statistically based on registered voters. Now, we don't know for sure. But the expert testified and wrote a report that in these four counties, the Dominion voting system machines appeared statistically to be casting too many votes for Joe Biden. In one case, casting more votes than there were voters in the county. You remember that? Some of you called about that. But there was a problem, and it was a Trump-appointed judge who said what the problem was. Those four counties in Michigan did not use those voting machines. In fact, those four counties did not use electronic voting machines at all. They used paper ballots, Scantron ballots. You filled, circled the bubble, and then it went through the machine. That was the machine. So the expert who Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani said found the Dominion system machines malfunctioning found four counties that didn't even use Dominion voter system machines. Another one of their experts showed how the Dominion system was easily hackable, and he himself was able to access the root of the system and make changes to it. And again, the Trump-appointed judge showed what the guy was actually looking at was their public-facing website, dominionvotingsystems.com. And you couldn't access the voting machines from their public-facing website. That's why he imposed sanctions on them in Michigan, Giuliani and Powell. So you can you can come at me with your, well, what about this, what about that? But these are two examples where Sidney Powell flat out misrepresented the truth of what was going on. She used experts who made claims and their claims on their face were false. So progressives, and I want to talk to progressives who might be hate listening right now. If they convinced Donald Trump it was so, how can you say he engaged in a conspiracy to overthrow an election when his lawyers convinced him that it was the Democrats who had engaged in a very successful effort to overthrow the election? Look at what their experts said. <laughs> Ah, you see, that's the problem. That's the problem with Jack Smith's case. The lawyers, the judge in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals who was appointed by Trump said, the lawyers knew or should have known that their experts were garbage and their data was garbage. But the client, the client relied on the lawyers. The client was the president of the United States, and he trusted Powell and Giuliani. What I see shaping up in this case is that someone's got to be the fall guy. It appears it's going to be Rudy Giuliani. Now, why, why do I say it's going to be Rudy Giuliani? Well, uh, one, uh, an enterprising lawyer yesterday noted that Rudy Giuliani fell $300,000 behind on legal bills. And a month later, the Trump campaign spent something like $350,000 paying the lawyers, and then Rudy Giuliani informed the court that he was no longer in arrearage. So it looks like the Trump team is covering the bills for these people. If that's the case, you're probably not going to have a Michael Cohen situation where he turns coat and rats out Trump. You're going to have fall guys. That, again, is a problem for Jack Smith. Lots of people could go to prison for what happened. Already, there have been a slew of January 6th defendants who have gone to prison. Donald Trump, by the way, could have pardoned all of those people. He chose not to before he left the White House. That happened January 6th. He didn't leave until January 20th. He could have pardoned all those people who are now in jail. Could have pardoned them all, and he didn't. That was his choice. He could have pardoned Rudy Giuliani. He could have pardoned Sidney Powell. He could have pardoned... Uh, Jeffrey Clark, he could have pardoned John Eastman. He didn't. Had he done so, it probably would be real evidence of him. He thought they committed crimes, and that would be bad for him. Because he did not pardon them and because he's paid legal bills for some of them, those people will probably fall on their sword for him. 
and you Democrats will not be able to get Donald Trump. That's the way the game is played, whether you like it or not. The problem, however, here is the defense. You got to show his state of mind if you're the prosecutor. And Donald Trump has legitimate reason to say, listen, I relied on Powell and Clark and Eastman and Giuliani. I, I relied on them. I relied on these lawyers. And if they were wrong, I was misled. And I'm sorry I was misled, but that's on them. That's not on me. And that is a defense. Back to the phones. Terry, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, doing well. What's going on? Um, I... Terry, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Um, instead of looking at Sidney Powell or Giuliani, can't he just use Stacey Abrams' famous quote from election <laughs> night <laughs> on 2020? Well, she said, we quote, we have tens of thousands of votes on hand in Georgia if needed. Yeah, look, uh, he's, he's going to use all of that stuff and, and play yeah. into it. The, 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 the statements made by Democrats. And, you know, this is something else. Democrats have been really dismissive of this today, and they shouldn't be. Donald Trump gets to make a defense, which means he gets to subpoena people who may not want to tell you. He gets to subpoena Stacey Abrams if he wants and say, what did you mean by that statement? Uh, he gets to subpoena the secretaries of state. He gets to subpoena the boards of elections officials in Fulton County. He gets to subpoena all of these people to show he had a reasonable basis for making his claims. Uh, the Democrats like this has got to be done before this has got to be done before the election. Not necessarily so. Uh, if Donald Trump wants to build a case to show he had a reasonable basis for believing the election was stolen, he gets to make that case. He gets to use these people's statements against them that they made publicly. He gets to use these behaviors and things we saw on video. He gets to subpoena the videos. He gets to do all of these things. This is not going to be a quick process. The Democrats just want him under the jail. The, the Democrats have already decided he's guilty. And that's going to be a problem for the Democrats because this is going to be a slow matter. Justice takes time, and the defendant is presumed innocent and gets to make his case. 877-973-7425. One more call before we get out of here. John, you're up next. Welcome. Hey, John. Well, I don't know what happened to John. Sorry about that. He was asking about Gavin Newsom getting into the race. I I don't know. You see, I, part of me, I go back and forth on this with, with Biden. Part of me thinks that we're going to get towards the end of the year and Joe Biden's going to say, well, folks, my whole job was to stop Donald Trump. Mission accomplished. I'm out of here. But he sounds like he's really decided to run for reelection. The problem is that Joe Biden not running opens the door for a lot of people in the Democratic Party to have a very nasty primary at a time the GOP is having their nasty primary. And Biden is convinced he's still the only guy in America who can stop Donald Trump and must therefore go again. I don't know that that's the case. It's going to be fascinating to watch, to see. By the way, before I get out of here, speaking of Giuliani, uh, this is Giuliani uh, with his statement regarding the indictment. Long ago, stop being careful, and I didn't worry. I don't worry about the Jack Smiths of this world. Uh, I have a chapter in my book called Stand Up to Bullies. So here's what I say to Jack Smith. After the Supreme Court threw out your case, which is, should, should, should have been a disgrace, and you should have gone and found another profession because you don't belong in this one. This one will be your legacy, violating the right of free speech of an American citizen. Never mind whether he was president or not. It could be anybody. It could be a homeless person. You don't get to violate people's First Amendment rights, Smith, no matter who the hell you are or no matter how sick you are with Trump derangement syndrome. And this isn't the first time you've acted like an unethical lawyer. It should be the last. Giuliani fired up. But also, he's starting to get over. You've got a Fulton County indictment against Giuliani probably coming. You've got this indictment clearly coming against Giuliani. He's got major debts and legal bills. Kind of sad to see America's mayor descend into this sort of stuff. Did you know China has made it a priority to teach students financial literacy starting in preschool? Financial literacy isn't taught in our elementary schools, and parents lack the resources to teach it at home. American kids are yet again being left behind. Now there's a great way for parents and grandparents to help the kids they love learn about finance, thanks to The Sensibles, and at bcs-kids.com. The Sensibles are a team of animated superheroes who help kids age 6 to 12 develop smart money habits in a fun way. 
bcs-kids.com was created to channel this multimedia resource to kids everywhere. Buy a subscription for your loved ones, and each month, they'll get a Sensibles kit in the mail with an entertaining DVD, comic book, and activities. Digital subscriptions are also available. They'll also get access to an interactive website with a library of lessons, fun activities, and more. Want 20% off the monthly subscription costs? Visit at bcs-kids.com. Enter the promo code ERIC, my name, E-R-I-C-K. It's the sensible thing to do. Subscribe today at bcs-kids.com. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, I am happy to answer your questions about, well, all of the insanity that's out there. You know, I, I want to just note that I think it was Ted Frank, who's a commentator on, on Twitter, noted that this second Jack Smith indictment makes the first one look more political. Because, and I know this is hard for people who hate Trump to understand, but it really is a a, a legal stretch here for some of these claims because they've never been prosecuted before. I mean, one of them is on the Civil Rights Act of 1866, the denial of uh, uh, conspiracy to deny people their vote except they had already voted. That That's a really hard thing. Uh, it's going to be really hard to make this case legally before you even get to the jury. The... Classified documents case, though, it's a very serious case. It is actually a very serious case. The reason it's a very serious case is because, well, they got the videotape surveillance and they found classified documents. Remember, the whole crux of it is a grand jury asked Trump to hand over documents. He didn't object and didn't fight the subpoena. He just didn't hand over the grand jury documents. That right there is a crime. And that's going to be very easy to prove. Even with a jury that that's sympathetic to Trump, that's a very easy crime to prove. And it looks like uh, they got the goods on it. But this case is harder. The Fulton County case is probably an easier case to make than the federal case because the Fulton County case, based on what we know, is a racketeering case. And racketeering cases are convoluted and complex, but the prosecutor has experience in building these sorts of cases, and there are all sorts of of angles and tie-ins there. Regardless, though, you've got four indictments, uh, three right now, a fourth one coming, maybe a fifth one related to some campaign finance issues. The amount of money Donald Trump is going to spend on lawyers makes it very impossible for him to campaign. And he could still get the Republican nomination, but good luck having the money to build a campaign to persuade persuadable independent voters, let alone do a ballot harvesting effort. That's the problem for Donald Trump supporters is they've got to decide, are we going to stand by our man? We're going to be Tammy Wynette or we're going to go help our man. If you stand by your man, you probably get Biden reelected. You help your man by finding someone who's going to pardon him and beat Joe Biden. Um, but I don't know that they're there yet. It, it feels like we're working through the stages of grief among supporters, and and we're just not there yet for a – it's all very emotional. Again, these people didn't rationalize their way into support of a candidate. You're not going to rationalize their way out of it. It's, it's an emotional thing, and I do get that. I also get why so many people are running to Eden Pure and getting the thunderstorm because it just works eliminating bad odors. You know, my wife and kids and I, we stayed up at a resort in North Georgia a while back. There are fireplaces in the resort, and they were running the Eden Pure. At first, I thought it was because of me, but I realized, no, nope, they're, they're, they really work. They eliminate uh, the bad odors in the hotel rooms from the, from the fireplaces, uh, uh, the smoky odors. They work. They work on bad odors, uh, dead animal odors, pet odors, litter box odors, smoke odors, musty odors. You can get three of them for less than $200 at EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. On the front page of the site, you put in my discount code, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. You'll get three Eden Pure thunderstorms. They are air purifiers. They get rid of the dust and the pollen, but they also eliminate odors. They wipe them out. They really do. You can plug them into the wall or plug them into a car USB outlet and fire them up. They work to eliminate odors. EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. Garden of Eden Pure is the driven snow. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code Eric, E R I C K. Get three Eden Pure Thunderstorms for less than $200. EdenPureDeals.com. I am a small businessman. The company that I run for my radio show, it's a small business. I've got employees. I don't have HR. You may be in that situation and you may really need HR. Well, 
You may want to talk to Bambi. When running a business, your employees can create all sorts of interesting situations and they could get you in trouble. What happens when two employees are squabbling? One of them smells bad all the time. What do you do? How do you navigate the rules? With Bambi, you get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 a month. They're available by phone, email, real-time chat. Onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance. Your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. Let Bambi handle your employees for you. Their HR autopilot automates important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. Listen, you want U.S.-based HR managers who give you experience, expertise, a personal touch you need to make it seem like they're a part of your team. They can cost eighty grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 a month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast when you sign up. It'll help you. It'll help your company grow. It'll help you keep peace of mind. It's spelled B-A-M-B-E-E. Bam. B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Eric Erickson. Greetings, conversationalists. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson across the nation. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, uh, the uh, Fitch, the rating service, has downgraded the American credit rating. And there are a lot of people who are not happy. The, it was stripped of its top-tier sovereign credit grade. Uh, it, the Fitch ratings criticized the ballooning fiscal deficits and a quote-unquote erosion of governance that's led to repeated debt limit clashes over the past two decades. The credit grader cut it uh, one level from AAA to AA+, echoing a move made more than a decade ago by S&P Global Ratings. Tax cuts and new spending initiatives, coupled with multiple economic shocks, have swelled budget deficits, Fitch said, while medium-term challenges related to rising entitlement costs remain largely unaddressed. The rating downgrade of the United States reflects the expected fiscal deterioration over the next three years, a high and growing general government debt burden, and the erosion of governance relative to AA and AAA rated peers over the last two decades, Fitch said in a statement. Now, uh, the Biden administration is screaming about this. It's only a matter of time before Fitch gets hauled before Congress or before Janet Yellen, and she gets upset about it. And, of course, the media itself is doing all sorts of defensiveness. Uh, Axios, the left-wing news outlet. And by the way, I, I've started to refer to Axios as a left-wing news outlet because it really has. I mean, they put people on their payroll to cover transgenderism uh, and climate change from a left-wing perspective. They they have started referring to pregnant women as pregnant people at Axios, uh, which shows me that they're left-wing. Uh, And and so they've got this out, the the weird credit downgrade. They say the resolution of the debt ceiling standoff in June was a surprisingly orderly affair in which it became clear that House Republican leaders and -and rank-and-file members weren't looking to default on the debt. A government shutdown is possible this fall, given sharp partisan divides over federal appropriations, yet this has been a semi-regular feature of how the U.S. operates since 1995. And while a recession later this year is possible, the odds of one have started to look more remote in recent weeks amid a flood of solid economic reports. There's no doubt that U.S. policymakers can be a, policymaking can be a messy affair and that the current deficit trajectory is problematic, but it's not as if credit and analysts have special insight into the scale of those challenges or how likely they are to spill over into some kind of default. On August 6, 2011, the S&P downgraded the day before uh, dominating uh, the, the upper right quadrant of the New York Times, and today's Fitch's downgrade didn't make A1 at all. That's really important to note. The New York Times has not noted the Fitch downgrade on its front page. They're covering for Joe Biden pretty significantly in this. The media is, which, by the way, tying this into the indictment, this is another issue for Trump supporters is how many people in America listen to the mainstream media They're low-information voters. They get their news from the nightly news. They don't go everywhere else. They just take it as truth, and they're covering the Trump indictment, and they're not covering the financial downgrade of the country. 
that's that's something that has to be considered by everyone. But I, I want to talk about this for a minute, and it, it's it's something we've spent some time on here. There are still concerns of a recession, but most major business outlets are saying, hey, the, the recessionary concerns are starting to fade. I don't think that's still the case. There, there are still predictions of a, a fourth quarter recession right as Biden is gearing up for re-election and economic downturn. They've been claiming Bidenomics, 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 and Bidenomics is going to make everything great. The problem here is our national debt continues to go up and in terms of GDP. So I, I want to express this to you. I was talking to a member, a former member of the Federal Reserve. He was a, a governor of the Federal Reserve. He was actually the vice chair of the Federal Reserve. He said, this is the problem we have to watch out for. Our national debt in terms of gross domestic product exceeds the GDP, and this is an unstable, unsustainable situation. He says the solution that a lot of governments try is to pay down the debt. You take taxpayer dollars and you target the debt and you lower the number. So you have a uh, – we're, we're doing old school math here. We're not doing common core. you got a numerator and a denominator and a fraction. So it's like one over five is one-fifth. So the one is the numerator. The five is the denominator. In the in our situation with the debt to GDP ratio, the debt is the numerator, the GDP is the denominator. So the GDP is a hundred, a hundred percent of the economy, and the numerator is a hundred ten. That means it is a hundred ten percent of GDP. It's a massive, massive increase over GDP. You exceed GDP. Our total debt exceeds all of the money our economy generates. So what Democrats like to do, what governments like to do is they take that 110 over 100 and they want to throw money at the 110 to try to shrink it down. What you really need to do is put in economic incentives to grow the denominator. So that 110 goes down because the 100 goes up. So the 100 becomes 110. So if it's 110 over 110, that's one. Our Debt equals our economic output. Well, if it becomes 110 over 200, suddenly it's a whole lot more manageable, isn't it? You're no longer, the total debt no longer exceeds our GDP. It's actually quite a bit less than our GDP. If you grow the economy, if you grow the economic output of the country, you reduce the debt in terms of a percentage of GDP. The problem is in Washington, our regulators and our legislators are not doing anything to bring efficiencies to the economy. They're not doing anything to speed up economic recovery. They're not doing anything to spark growth. So our debt continues to grow. In fact, we had that debt limit deal, and the debt is growing faster than the debt limit deal agreed the debt would grow. That's going to have long-term ramifications on the United States because it's going to slow our economy because ultimately our economic growth is going to be poured into our debt to try to pay down our debt, which we're not going to be able to do. We're going to have to have major tax increases to make it stable. And if you have major tax increases, it's going to slow down the economy. And the Democrats do not have an answer for it. There's a level of frustration. I, and it's not just me. Everybody I talk to is frustrated by this. We are fighting over the two most disliked politicians in America outside of Hillary Clinton. Trump versus Biden, people find them detestable. You may not. Most people do. Uh, Yeast infections on your backside have a higher popularity rating than Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Athlete's foot is more popular in this country than Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Herpes is more popular than Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And unlike Joe Biden and Donald Trump, herpes goes away and stays away for quite a little while, typically. People in America would rather herpes 
than Donald Trump or Joe Biden be the next president of the United States. But the Democrats and Republicans are so emotional about standing by their men in this Tammy Wynette election that they would rather foist Donald Trump and Joe Biden on the public and force the public to choose, and the public is just going to stay home. We've been talking about um, record-breaking elections. Joe Biden getting over 80 million people. Republicans to this day that I know who don't know anything about math and population growth are like, this is impossible. It is impossible that he got that many votes. Well, says an ignorant person. But we're going to see a massive decline in voter turnout come 2024. People are unenthusiastic. Even internally, people are unenthusiastic. They're just turning out to stand by their man. It's Tammy Wynette. Meanwhile, the nation's fiscal state continues to erode. Our saving grace in this country is China. Don't look now, but the Chinese may soon be entering a depression, not a recession. Prices are beginning to collapse in China. The real estate market is beginning to collapse in China. Uh, Income is beginning to collapse in China. Everything is collapsing in China. It's another reason Xi Jinping may decide to go to a war in Taiwan to salvage their economy. It should be a terrible way to salvage the economy, but that's what he thinks will help. Uh, it, it's a bad, bad deal in China right now economically. Uh, their Banks are failing. Real estate companies are failing. Major corporations are failing. People's pay is going down. Prices are going down. Prices are going down not as quickly as wages are going down, so people still can't afford to buy stuff. It is an economic calamity beginning to happen in China, and that makes our economy better. Our economy is the strongest in the world, but just think about this. Our credit just got downrated by Fitch because of the economic stability in our country and our debt-to-GDP ratio in this country. Congress seems unwilling to do anything about it, and we're still an economic powerhouse compared to everybody else on the planet. That's a damning indictment of all the other economies on the planet, but it doesn't make us good. We're just the tallest midget in the room. Assuming I can still say midget on the radio. And Republicans and Democrats are just squabbling about which old man to foist on the public. The public is incensed. Which old man shall we foist on the public, the one who can't find his way off the stage or the one who goes on angry tirades on social media and writes in all caps? Which one will we foist on the American public? This, This is the problem we have in our political situation right now, and it's having a direct impact on our economic situation right now. It's all an unhealthy situation, and the American people feel stuck, and they're going to begin to disengage politically. And I don't know that it helps Republicans to have a whole bunch of people sit home because there are a lot of people who want to vote against Joe Biden, and they're not going to vote against him if Donald Trump's the Republican nominee because they think he's a criminal. Meanwhile, our kids are being indoctrinated in public schools. Our economy is beginning to to teeter over and fail. Our cities are collapsing into third world hell holes. And the American public's trying to find someone who's just willing to offer fixes. And they're not getting it. And a third party could finally rear its head. And the Democrats are spit mad about no labels, thinking that's just going to help Trump. I don't know that it helps anybody. But it does give the American people somewhere to throw their votes as a rejection of the two major parties. I'm a formerly elected Republican. I'm a conservative. I vote Republican. Do not vote for Democrats. But I understand the angst and anxiety so many voters have towards both parties right now. And if you're not feeling it, you're probably not normal. You're probably someone really plugged into hyperpartisan politics. But I assure you, most Americans right now are just deeply frustrated with the state of the economy. And now we've got a credit downgrade, which will drive up interest rates even more and drive up the debt service even more, which becomes this exacerbating, cascading effect and a sick cycle that repeats and continues to get worse, and no one in Washington wants to deal with it. That's the problem. 
Some of you, however, have a more pressing problem. That is school starts in the next couple of weeks. And you're trying to get your kid school supplies, including probably a laptop or a desktop computer for your kid to do homework on. Let me suggest you reach out to Vision Computers. Wherever you are nationwide, you can reach out to them. 404 Computers, their number asked about the Eric Erickson special. Vision Computers can build your computer. So you can go to the big box store or you can go to one of the online sites and just buy a generic computer. Maybe add a little RAM. Maybe add a little more of a processor. Get a bigger monitor. But you don't know what the heck you're doing. Vision knows what they're doing, and they can get you something that you need and want that's going to last multiple years and not just be outdated after this year. And your kid's going to love it because they'll get a phone number where they can call Vision and let Vision tech support troubleshoot for them without having to deal with you and your angry temper because you don't know what's going on with the computer. Vision can be their IT department. Yes, mom and dad, you can let Vision talk to the kids and let the kids figure out how to fix the computer with Vision. If you got a business, you can do the same thing. Buy your employees computers built by Vision, and Vision will be their tech support so they don't have to call you. You don't have to hire an internal IT guy. You just call Vision. Let him service the computers. You can go to visioncomputers.com or 404 Compute. Now, those of you in Abilene, Texas, you're listening. You're like, 404, that's an Atlanta area code. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They can take care of you nationwide, wherever you are. If you're in Abilene, Texas, if you're in Missoula, Montana, you can go to visioncomputers.com or call them 404 Compute. They can ship the computer to you, and in many cases, they can just remote in over the Internet to be your tech support guy. VisionComputers.com or 404 Compute. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The full number 877-973-7425. Importantly, if you text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777, you, you can get the podcast, you can get the show notes, you can get the social media links, you can get the 24-7 live stream, everything you need to follow me around the internet and get access to the show if you're traveling or need the podcast, text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. You should subscribe to the daily email. You can do it for free. Uh, paid subscribers do get extra. It's 7 bucks a month. Um, but even just the general subscribers, my morning email typically goes to everyone. We send clips from the show, interviews with the gathering coming up. Uh, the gathering, we're, we're going to be sending a lot of stuff to the subscribers. Uh, so if you can't come to the gathering, for those of you who don't know what the gathering is, it's my annual political conference. I've got um, Ramaswamy, Chris Christie, Ron DeSantis, Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, uh, Glenn Youngkin, Brian Kemp, Joni Ernst, Tom Cotton, Rich McCormick, Chip Roy. So many great speakers coming some candidates for office and others. Um, and we'll be sending clips, doing interviews with them. So uh, you should subscribe. Just text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. Now, here's the thing. If you want a 15% off discount for a year, um, it's like $70 for a year for Substack, uh, my subscription, but you can get 15% off if you text DATA, D-A-T-A, text DATA to 33777 and subscribe through that link. You get 15% off. And you'll start getting all the stuff from the conference. The conference is coming. Uh, you're not going to want to miss the conference. We're going to have great people there. It's sold out. So you can't get a ticket in person. But if you're a paid subscriber to the email, you're going to get all the exclusives. And then you get a discount for the next conference. You know, I gave too much of a discount. This is part of the problem. I gave too much of a discount to the subscribers this year. And so tickets sold out really, really quick. Um, but it's going to be a good time. I still got to gotta find a printer to get the signs printed and the program. I got all the stuff I got to do this week. Charlie's done all the all the hard work and now I got to do the the design and find a printer and get everything printed and stuff, but I will outsource to my assistant. Okay, round 2. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire. Huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, full work, limited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.